Welcome back. Retirement is often seen as out of reach for many people, uh, with some deciding that they will never be in a position to stop working. Yeah, but as retirement instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation says that with pop proper planning, it is achievable. And uh, we love having Michael here. Yes. Uh, we've got a, a very cool series that we're starting. Today's the start of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to break down retirement savings per age throughout your, the course of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today we're starting with kind of the, the younger kids, anybody that is just graduating college through maybe the first decade of their life. Right, exactly. And really, so this is a, a big challenge because kids have finally, they have the college degree in their hand, they have the first job offer in their hand, and they're ready to take on the world. And all of a sudden, life hits them pretty fast. Yeah. They have what they feel like is a really awesome income, hopefully for the first time. and. They're excited to go on the vacation, to buy the car, to buy the house, to do all these really fun things. But trying to rail that, you know, reel that in early and make sure we have our feet underneath us first is really important. Yeah. So you know, first things first, get the emergency fund set up. Make sure we have three to six months of savings on hand, and start building credit appropriately. Have the credit cards, but paying them off every time. Make sure we have the student loans paid off. All right. Pause for a second here, because I want to talk about that emergency fund. Mm -hmm. um, three to six months. First off, is it three or six? So. So three, it's three. Ideally, closer. The, the younger you are, the, the the more volatile life can be. If we can get to six, fantastic. Once you really, once you've been with a job for three, five, ten years, you're in a really stable spot. Mm -hmm. If you got to dip it down to three once in a while, fine. But closer to six is ideal. Okay. So in that emergency fund, what <laughs> is, what are the what are the the check marks in yeah. that. We're talking like, what, all what is the bills, it? Yeah, it's a great question. So, yeah. you know, checking savings. Mm -hmm. Checking and it, you know, people do CDs. CDs are fine. My only issue with CDs is that if you if you need to dip into it and surrender the CD, there's a small penalty. So really just checking savings. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And ideally, a savings account with a decent interest rate. Yeah. And today you can get a savings account for 4 4 4.5%. But you're adding up your budgetary, your monthly budgetary costs. My rent is this much, my car payment is this much, my mm -hmm. cell phone is this month every month yep. these are my non-negotiables yep. multiply that by three and now you've got your three-month emergency fund and then ideally at some point six exactly okay. have okay. you guys started looking into this buy now pay later which is a newer thing that's popping up and I'm understanding there's not even really enough research yet to know how it's gonna affect these young people long term it's popping up a lot and yeah. you see it I mean I see it all the time and I'm checking out on Amazon mm -hmm. I'm checking out on my Chipotle order there's a buy now yeah. pay later for yeah. my Chipotle order <laughs> yeah and I'm thinking, okay, if someone's so breaking up the Chipotle order into, into four different segments, we might have a problem here. Yeah. Um, but the challenge is that if people really start opting into that, mm -hmm. it's hard to track how much do I owe. I mean, I, I have 17 buy now, pay later um, payments going on per month. Yeah. And, and you lose track of, wait a minute, how much is out there that I owe still? Right. So trying to stay away from that mm -hmm. and really, you know, if we, if we need to use it, then use it. But make sure we're tracking that independently on our own. Michael, what advice do you have for 25 years old, graduated college, got my first job? You're setting up on day one your 401k contributions. So what do you a do? lot of employers, which is fantastic, auto enroll people now. They say, you know what, you're automatically enrolled at 3% or whatever their auto enroll percentage is, which is fantastic. Two issues. Number one, ideally, we want to get to 15% as fast as we can. The more 15 we can. 15% of your paycheck going into retirement. Exactly. Okay. And you know, I know that's, you know, we have student loans, maybe we're renting, we're, we're getting our feet underneath us, we're furnishing that apartment, whatever it is. That might be tough up front, and that's fine, but get there as fast as we can. The second thing is the, when we're younger, we're on the lower end of our pay scale, Roth on the Roth side, pay the taxes. So Roth versus traditional, maybe we can tackle that later on in the next segment later yeah. on today. But you want to be on the Roth side because all that Roth 401k savings is growing tax free and you get the tax free income in retirement. It's the, a huge difference. The older you get, you hear people say, you know, I wish when I was younger, I had spent a little more time doing this. I wish I had traveled. I wish I had done this. So how do you break young people of the mindset of <laughs> I'm gonna do it now because one day I'll be making a bunch of money and I'll pay it off then or I'll, I'll be able to contribute then it's so common and really you know people think well I'll get promotions and I'll make more and yeah. hopefully that's the case but starting these habits early is so much more powerful it is so difficult we see this with people who come to the class who they they told themselves when they were 25 and 30 mm -hmm. I'll start saving later yeah and then things keep coming up vacations right? and then kids and mm. things keep coming up start the savings now mm. if you ask anyone in their 40s 50s or older 
Do you wish he started saving earlier? They're all going to say yes. It's yeah. unbelievable the power of starting early. Okay. Uh, we got a lot more to tackle when we come in our second segment with Michael, including, and I want to dig into this uh, employer match when it comes to 401ks, because, yeah. like, there's some tricky things sometimes. It's like half percents for every percent and right. all this. So we'll get into that coming up a little bit uh, later in the show. 10 o'clock hour. Thanks for watching The Nine. Well, last hour, local financial instructor Michael Mazarant gave us uh, some good tips for our younger, our younger friends mm -hmm. on uh, how they can save for retirement. Yeah, he's joining us now with a little bit more on that. So for people in their 20s and maybe early 30s, we're trying to focus every week on, an, on a chunk of people. So 20s and 30s is for today. Mm -hmm. When it comes to whatever age you're at, I think everybody asks the same question. Yeah. How much money should I have by 25 in my 401k? How much money should I have by 30? So how much? <laughs> there, <laughs> there are a lot of guidelines. So a great rule of thumb is by the time you're 30, shoot to have one times your salary in your 401k. So if someone is making 50,000 per year, try to have $50,000 in your 401k by 30. You know, by 35, try to have two times your salary. And I know this can be discouraging for people. They go, they, they, they pull their 401k up, they do the math and go, ooh, I'm not there, I'm not on track. That's okay, don't get discouraged. Just do what you can to keep increasing that contribution amount. Compounding growth is amazing. A lot of people get discouraged around, I know we're talking 20s and 30s today, but a lot of people get discouraged around 45 or 50 because they've been saving, saving, saving for 20 years. Yeah. And they don't think they're making a whole lot of headway. But then the growth they get between 45 and 50, 55 and 60, is more than they saved their first 20 years. Mm. The compounding growth is amazing. All right, so let's get back to 20s and 30s. You're out of college, got the first job, you're setting up your 401k. Mm -hmm. How much you wanna take out every paycheck? What's the right way to do that? So shoot for as much as you can, and ideally shoot for 15%. If you've gotta start small, fine, start small, but come back to it every couple months and keep creeping it up. One more percent, two more percent, five yeah. more percent, you're not going to notice it in the paycheck, but increasing that and ideally, you know, giving yourself an automatic bump every one or two years, you'll get a raise every one or two years, you're not going to notice it, it makes a huge difference. It, it's so easy to kind of set it and forget it. Set it and How forget it. How often should we be going back to look at it? Sometimes that can be discouraging, uh, but we need to kind of always know, right? How so much we, is in there? We've got to know, and honestly, this is one mistake people make a lot, is they, they check it too often. I know it sounds mm -hmm. a little silly, but if someone is prone to you know, being anxious about the stock market, yeah. don't check it. When you're 25 and the stock market crashes, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. you're not, you don't need this money for 30 years. And honestly, for younger people, if the stock market's down, that is a good thing for younger people. You are buying in at lower prices. Yeah. Don't panic, don't pull the money out. It's going to recover and grow. You have plenty of time. What is this idea of company match and this whole uh, free money situation? So company match, it's companies incentivizing their employees to save to the 401k, which is a great program. So a company might say, look, if you will match you dollar for dollar for the first 5%. So the mm -hmm. first 5% you put in, we will also put in 5% with you. So now you're saving 10%, 5% from you, 5% for the company. Yeah. They'll sometimes do a, a prorated match where they'll say, okay, we'll match 50% of the first 10%. And I know it's a little wonky here, yeah. but that means if you put in 10%, they'll do 50% of your contribution. So you put in 10, they put in five. That's free. So you're, that's, that's free money. money they're giving to you. So you've got to at least always take the match. It's People free money they're giving to you. hear that 10 and five though, is, is it always a good idea to go at least up to the match or you want to be involved in any time that they're matching you want to make you sure you're taking advantage of that. You always want to get the match. Yeah. It is free money they're going to put into your account for you. If you don't take the match you're just you're losing money. Yeah. That actually makes it pretty easy for somebody who is young and out of college and just setting it up is just ask the question how much does the company match and, and at the very minimum do. I'm doing that. At least do that and then come back every couple months and keep increasing it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, we're talking a little bit about Roth as well. Yes, yeah, so Roth versus traditional. So Roth 401k, traditional 401k, two different types, same concept, two different types. Roth 401k, you pay the taxes now, the money grows, 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 you get the money back tax-free when you're retired. Traditional 401k, you get a tax deduction now, you don't pay the taxes now, the money grows, 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 you pay taxes when you're retired. 
So for a lot of people, when they're just starting their jobs, they're in a lower tax bracket now than they're going to be down the road. Right. So you want to pay the taxes now, mm. let it grow tax-free on the Roth side, and get it tax-free in retirement. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. Makes there you sense. go. Uh, great stuff. Uh, Michael, thank you so much. Next week, uh, we're going to talk about um, the next 10 years, maybe 35 to 45. Mm -hmm. So rules a little different depending on how old you are and how, how farther down that track and closer to retirement. Absolutely, you for sure. If you want to watch this again, we'll be posting it online. You can also visit retirementplanningedu.org for more information.